lives and the there, career. There's a, there's a, hold, hold that because there's, there's something that's occurred to me. There's a little bit of a backstory here because at that time, the Lancers were either playing in the MISL, they were, were they? Yep, they were. So what is Sam doing at a PASL championship game yeah. as the rival owner of rival league, rival, rival, rival? They, uh, I think he just has a great mind. And he, wow. he, he he knows he he can see wow. talent. He can he can he can see talent. If 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 you put him on a plane and say, hey, can you find a, he can find Waldo. I think he, I think he, he could. could find, I think he can find Waldo. He could find, he could find Waldo. Waldo. I think he could. Oh, um, that's so I think, awesome. So I think when when he initially said, hey, I saw you playing, I knew that he was invested at that moment. Okay. Because he did travel all the way across country to see okay. a PASL championship game when. There was that rivalry between oh, no. MISL and not only, yeah, not a, and not even was, a rivalry. It was, it was, it was bad blood. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was even worse than bad blood yeah, because it, it, it was PASL skunk. Yeah, it was, know, it was, the, it was. PASL was the lower tier. Right. MISL yeah, was just, MISL is it. Yep. PASL is skunk. Yep. And it's amazing that he would co- take the time to come and even. Well, that's just huge. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so let's move forward. Um, you guys are now playing for the Rochester Lancers. Is this the first time? You, obviously, this is the first time you've played for Soccer Sam. This is the first time yep. you've been under contract with him. Maybe gotten to know him. Yeah. Uh, and you've moved to Rochester. Uh, I'm brokenhearted because you're now playing in the MISL. <laughs> um, well, it, I think that was the first year that they merged. So that was the MA. That so that was, was, that was the first MASL. MASL? Yeah, and that was the first year that the was MA, that, was MASL. It the last, was it the, also the last year that the Lancers played, or did they play two yes. years? Yes, nope, that was the last year, too. They, so it was the okay. first year that the MA, MASL started, was, right. Rochester was in it, and then after that so first when he, year. So when he discontinued, how did, the, well, just, how did that season go? Um, Go ahead. It was it was successful for what we for what we were going for. I mean, it was the we wanted to make playoffs. Um, you of know, course, still a young team, uh, going against some pretty pretty good talent over there with Baltimore, Harrisburg, so um, us. Detroit was in Detroit and Chicago. Were, that was our conference. I know. You know, so you have the powerhouses and Syracuse, too. And Syracuse as well. So you have the powerhouses of both PASL. MISL of the East Coast, all in one conference. That's right. Um, so we had a very, very, very good mindset of if we can make playoffs, that'll be successful. That's right. Uh, and, and it was. And we were selling out our last game against Baltimore. There was 10,000 fans at Blue Cross Arena. Um, so it was very successful. And wow. we had we had a, a long-term deal there. We, we wanted to stay there, and we knew. And we were there year-round, and we, we remember the call from Soccer Sam, and he said, hey, uh, we have to pull the plug on the Lancers. Done. done. We're done. Done. And it was it was heartbreaking. It, it was, was an insurance thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was Workman's Comp. comp Workman's know, Comp. It kept rising and rising and rising. It was and state state of New York. Yep. yep. State okay. of New York. So that that's what happened. Um, and from there, us two and Joey Tavernisi actually uh, a lot of a lot of people might forget about this. We signed with a team called Hartford City FC. Interesting. In Connecticut for the for, that was in the MASL. Um, and we were there for a month, and then they had a whole. Fraud and money, embezzlement. No, that's embezzlement. never happened in <laughs> indoor soccer. Um, Come on. So, so nothing like that's ever happened in indoor soccer. So yeah, we. If you want a Hartford City FC shirt or, or scarf, a scarf, I still have we one. We still have them. <laughs> um, but that's okay. that's where we were after that. So you know, we went from a heartbreak with that to a team that was 35 minutes from our hometown. You know, we were that was our backyard. <laughs> yeah. And then from from there, um, we we went separate ways with Tabernese going to Ontario. Uh, right, and, right, and, right. and us going to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And that's right. when we played for the Rampage. Right. Okay. Talk about that one. And the Rampage they, was a little bit short-lived also. But. Yep. So that, so that was the first year of their expansion team. And um, I remember And they it, came out pretty strong. Yep. I remember it. We, uh, we were in Hartford and we were packing our stuff up or we were getting everything situated, figuring out what we had to do. And um, wait, 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 before you go any further, what I don't want to forget is I want to, I want to, I want to squeeze in the uh, 2015 World Cup. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so chronologically in the conversation. Yep. yep. So um, then, so after the year of uh, of Rochester and me playing in Rochester, I was sitting up uh, in Webster, uh, New York, where we were housed, um, and I was playing video games, and uh, I got a call from Aaron Susie. Nice. And uh, he said, "Hey, Joey, um, you know the." World Mini Football World Cup is happening, and Chris Toth is, uh, he has a beach tournament, beach soccer That's right. tournament. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, we have, we have Danny Waltman as our number one goalkeeper right now, and we would like to see if you want to be the number two. And at that wow. moment, I knew, I, I think I literally was like just shell-shocked. Um, 
just to be well even you've been in noticed the picture. yeah okay, so you've been noticed I mean, i'll be honest with you from a, from from you know observational standpoints you've been noticed people had seen what you've done you carry an american flag on your back yep so i mean th th there's there's a little bit of a natural for this um and stepping in under danny yeah is, is gonna be those are small shoes to fill them <laughs> <in all honesty. laughs> Yeah. Danny yeah. Wallman, Chris yeah. Tove, Joey Gapino. Yeah, no, is... not even close. <laughs> not even close. Um, no, but so, so Aaron Susie said, you know, would you like to, you know, be a part of the team? And I said, there's no questions asked. I'm 100% in. Um, because I knew Danny Wallman, the caliber character and the player he is, just by watching the indoor stuff that he does, you know, if and you don't, if you don't, if you don't watch Danny Wallman, don't watch just the soccer aspect of Danny no, no, Wallman. No, he's a he's an all around awesome dude. Exactly. Watch the watch him interact with the crowd, the fans. Right, he's right. always throwing gloves out. He's always touching gloves. Uh, you know, yeah, you tapping know, hands. With, he's, you know, he's so he's a great ambassador. So, exactly. He's a so, great athlete. So when Aaron Susie said, "Hey, would you like to be the number two behind Danny Wallman?" I said, "I can learn a lot from him." All right. The first thing in the Dan worst case scenario. In the worst case scenario. Yeah. yeah. In the worst yeah. case scenario, go I get to learn out, under Danny Wallman. Go fly out to. San Diego, spend a week in San Diego, you know, train and play. Terrible games. place to go. Yeah, you know, I don't want, yeah, I wanted to stay <laughs> up in the Northeast, you know. Um, so the funniest thing is, is when I got to initially, I met Danny. Uh, we might have played a little bit against each other before this, but I, I, you know, I got to talk to Danny a lot at the uh, World Mini Football World Cup when we were practicing, and I showed up like I used to play in Detroit. No elbow pads, no padded pants no cup. And Danny Wallman looked at me and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you don't have any protection whatsoever. I said, no, I like being light on my feet. And he said, invest, do one thing and invest in one thing for me. And I said, what is that, Danny? He goes, buy a cup. Nice. So to this day, from that moment, he said, buy a cup. I will not step and go without a cup on. Absolutely. Because it just made a total difference. when It the, changes indoor... your whole situation. I mean, you can be confident on a, on a, on a on the only thing Greg I have to worry about right now is his big nose. His big nose. That's it. I just have to worry about this now. That's it. That's right. It so it, it, I can see exactly what that makes. The difference that makes right <laughs> off the bat. Because now Done. when an indoor, everything's Done. so close. Everything's so close Done. in indoor that these shots from me to you yeah. are being taken. Yeah. I just have to make the save. That's right. And if I don't have to worry about. That's right. I can take a full hit. Yeah, I can take a full <laughs> hit. And be totally okay with it. You know, and and from that moment on, I've never gone into a net without a cup on because it just was a mindset that he he said hey you know if you want to be playing the sport for a very long time you have to wear you have to use padded pants a cup and elbow pads All right um so that was actually the alan, first thing alan mayer ever... would have said a helmet too by the way yeah 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 <laughs> um and and i think danny i mean uh, i can't talk enough about that guy but uh, that's great um but yeah it, it was a it was a great experience i got to you know Play with Craig Childs, Matt Clare, uh, Aaron Susie, Keek Tovar, uh, John Souza, Pat Healy, Tony Donatelli. I, I mean, that roster was stacked. If I you wanted an All Star stacked. team, yeah, that was it. That was it. That was um, it. And I think, and I think that's why we were so successful at the World Cup. Um, and what a grueling schedule. Oh, I mean, are you kidding? I think you guys had one travel day to down to Tulsa. I and think then after Tulsa, we had to go up to Chicago. But that was a playing day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, didn't you only have one open day that was yeah, just a travel day? Yep, that was it. Every other place you had to go, had you to had play. to play and travel the same day. Yep, yep. Yeah, and it was, it, and it was, it was challenging for a week and a half. Yeah, it was, it was challenging. Not um, just for a weekend, but for a week and a half, for yeah. ten days or something like that. You guys had just grueling schedule. Yeah, um, and it was, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, obviously, we won it, and it's it's. And that wasn't to give either. I mean, Mexico was playing. No, to, yeah, they, they were playing to win. Yeah, I mean, Brazil was stacked. Mexico was stacked. Czech Republic came to Czech win. Czech Republic was really good. Yeah, Germany yeah. was very Germany good. Germany was good. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of good teams there, but I think you know with what Phil Salvaggio did with uh, the game plan and the roster he put together, I think he put the pieces perfectly to win. He had a lot of errors, he, and then he also had Gordy Gerson. I so know, you, think huh? about it, you had Craig Childs, right, right, and then you also have this brand new kid to the yeah, indoor game, yeah, Gordy Gerson. Crazy. Taylor and Bond was there too, wasn't he? Yes, yes, he was. So you you had that mixture of old Evan McNeely, right? Old, well, not old, but older, right, right, right. Older Evan McNeely, older Craig Childs veterans. at that time. Yeah, veterans, and then you had the understudies of Matt so, Clare. So I like to call that I like the, that combination. I like to call that the the guys who know what it takes to win, and the guys that don't know what it means to lose. Yep. Yeah, it was, and it was having a, that combination together where you have these these young guys that can just go crazy, go yep. in there and not have any, you know, you know, all out. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Yep. And the other guys that know how to settle it down, play it easy, take it, take care and settle down the game because exactly. they know what it takes to win. Exactly.
yeah. exactly. Well, that was and it was it was fun too. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little disappointed, um, and we'll get back to the regular the regular league stuff. But I'm a little disappointed what's happened with the uh, the WMF. Yeah. Um, and how we lost the uh, the Arena World Cup in last year in uh, Hermosillo. It was supposed to be played in Hermosillo. Yep. And we lost that. Um, I, I enjoy the mini football outdoors, but it's not it's the not arena indoor. game. It's not indoor. It's not the arena game. It's not indoor. Um, and uh, I, I also enjoy the fact that we have a mixed team where the, it's, it's the same, you know, pulling from the same, you, you know, skill set of people, you know, to put together those teams for, the, for both games. But we don't have that arena game. And I'm looking forward to seeing what, what's going to happen and trying to bring that back together. Let's talk about Cedar Rapids now. So Cedar Rapids, brand new expansion team. We were considered two veterans, I guess, on that team. Um, Is this the was... first time you were looked upon that way? I'd yeah. say so. Okay. I'd say so because Rochester, we we were still brand new to Rochester. Okay. You know, we had Mauricio Salas, we had Jake Schindler, we had Elliot Foskey. We, I mean, we could go on and on. Sure. Doug Miller was still playing. Nice. Um, so so we were playing coaching as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But we were still young. We were still learning. We were learning a system in indoor soccer for the first time with Rochester. Okay. Um, so when we went to Cedar Rapids, we kind of wanted to implement what we knew worked in Rochester. Uh, and we butted heads with some other players. You know, we we still have all the respect for everyone that we've played with on every team, wherever of it course. has been. Of course. Um, but, you know, we had Everton and we had Jeff Kraft, uh, you know, people who have been around the game for years. Uh, um uh, Chili Farias. Chili Farias as well. Oh, wow. Chili yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, well, you know, Alex, Alex Megson. You know, we had a lot of people, and we, we even had um, Tozer's yeah, yeah, Alex uh, Tozer. son, Alex Tozer. Yeah, we had Alex Tozer. Keith Tozer's yeah. son, Alex Tozer, on the team as well. So wow. there was a lot of people that had different mindsets of what should have been done. Um, and we, we, we were fighting with Kansas City the first game. We were fighting, and they they beat us in overtime. In overtime, and in the in the twelfth minute of overtime, yeah. When it was supposed to be a ten minute when overtime, it was supposed to be a ten minute overtime. They scored in the twelfth. They scored in the so, twelfth. So so that, that kind of was a, that kind of was a start to a, a damper of a season. But you know they were getting the fans. You know we yeah. were in a new area, um, and we were treated really well. Um, but we were looked at as veterans, and you know sometimes we would put in our input and give our input, um, and then you know the season went how it was, and. Um, the next thing we know, we were getting a call after the season ended. We were getting a call um, from Bernie, and and Bernie Lillowall was trying to get us for a few years now. Um, we just never made the jump to the West Coast, uh, and I think it's just because we 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 wanted to be in Rochester, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and when that didn't work out, we were kind of rushed with the Hartford situation mm -hmm. and Cedar Rapids, mm -hmm. um, and you know what we were going you know going through at that time so when bernie called we said yeah let's go to california and why the, not and the only the only reason we ended up at cedar rapids was because i got a, we got a call from alex megson who we played with in rochester and he said hey joey um we just heard about hartford city um you know not having a team our goalkeeper just tore his acl in preseason oh, wow. are you interested are you do you have any interest in playing for cedar rapids and at that time we had no other team Sure. Because it was only a month before the season started, right. so everybody roster was already made up, right. and everybody right. had their plan together. Right. Um, so then he said, "Hey, are you guys interested?" And I said, "For sure. Um, right. You know, let's talk about it." And it, it, the ball started rolling, and we ended up at Cedar Rapids. And then um, after Cedar Rapids happened, like he said, we ended up in Ontario, California. And uh, how how do you how's your memory of Ontario? Beautiful. I loved I loved uh, you know the organization over there. It was great. Snow capped mountains. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a painting. It's a painting every single time you get out of your out of Ran when you're in Rancho Cucamonga. It's 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 a painting whenever you look up. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. I don't want to see it when it's on fire though. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was it's it's a be it's a beautiful uh, Ontario is a great a good city, um, beautiful arena, Isn't probably one of the most beautiful arenas I've ever played in. Yeah, it it's is massive. Um, you know, Bernie does a, a good production over there. Yeah. Um, you know we. Uh, we made the playoffs. Uh, right. We we beat San Diego in the second game. I know. We sure did. Yep. And then we lost one. Can we say that again though? Yeah. We for beat all San the Diego. viewers out there, <laughs> for the people in the back, for the people in the back, yeah. we'll say it louder. <laughs> we did beat San Diego <laughs> Soccer's in the playoffs in our second game. In our second game. 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 <laughs> and then uh, and we how'd lost one. Mini, how'd that mini game go? <laughs> you guys scored like 13 seconds. Wait, there was a goal that was called, but that was not called over the line. Yeah, yeah. We debate that it was. Yeah. Cho said it didn't go over, but it might have. 
Um, but no, it was it was a good year for us. Um, we enjoyed it. We. Uh, I don't think it matters what Toth said. I think it matters what the what, what, <laughs> what the, the guy, yeah, what the, guy, guy said, the flag yeah. man said. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we had a great season there. Um, we enjoyed the weather. That uh, was, was a gut check series, by the way. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> and, and and you know, at that moment, we had to. I think how many how many games did we have to win out? Oh we, no no, had, it was four at least. Oh, it was, yeah. it was yeah. Fort Lee. We had, well, we had the, we had the on grueling, the road. We had the, the grueling road trip of El Paso, Dallas, oh. Chicago. Three days back to back, flying. Tra- or was it three? It was three, three back to three back. days. Three, three days, days, and I'm going. It's impossible. And you That's, had to win. You had to win them all. Yep. And there was, and just, are you kidding? Yeah, and it was, it was, it was crazy too because you know we had to fly from Ontario to El Paso. We had to play a game in El Paso. Well, here's then, where, here's oh. where the experience from the World Cup thing helped. Yep. Yeah, and then, and then we had to go from we had to go from El Paso, and we had to take a nine hour bus drive, oh, bus come ride on. to Dallas, over the night, overnight. overnight, and overnight the bus that we had rented was an old bus that had no heat. <laughs> so even though you're in Texas, Chicken it gets cold. in the back. It gets cold. So we had our we had our teammates who were from Brazil taking the shades off of. Oh my the blinds, gosh. the blinds off the windows, and using it as blankets because they were that cold. So we had like this whole ordeal of we had to travel nine hours, cold as could be, freezing in a bus. Then we had to go play in Dallas. We ended up winning in Dallas. Then okay, the- I'm just gonna tell you if if the if it was a nice warm motor coach, we probably would have lost. 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 Yeah, we'd have lost for yeah. sure. Yeah. We'd, so we'd for sure. Yeah. For, yeah. And, then, the and, then, and then we 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 beat Dallas, and then we had to win again in Chicago. We had to go up to Chicago and win. Um, we had a flight that night, then or that the next day. I just remember morning. it was yeah. grueling. It was impossible. Oh, it was brutal. impossible. Well, looking at that schedule, I'm looking at that, and it's, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. And we and I, and I think at that time Nick Pereira was also on a beach tournament. So Nick wasn't even on our roster for those three road games I either. I think you're right. So it was like, oh my God, we had all these ordeals and all these, you know, and then, bumps and hills. And, and then that earns you a place in the playoffs versus the San Diego Soccers. And you take that to the limit. You take that series to the limit yeah. and, and and lose it in that mini game. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was gut wrenching. And uh, that was, I actually was emotional at the end of the game because I thought I was done. I had, I had a mindset where I was happy with where I was and what I accomplished, where I said, hey, you know, that could have been my last game. And I was extremely emotional. Um, huh. But and but then, you know, we still had to, we had a we had a multi-year contract, but I just I just was happy. I was content with wow. where I was. I, I, I was really, really, really comfortable, you know, knowing I, I've done something special throughout my career. Um, but that's not how it ended. Um, we I hate to say it, but we got kind of um short end of the stick the short end of the stick when it came to ontario and again nothing hard against bernie or the organization it's a sport we, we, we so know. from the fans perspective jamie um it was like what's going on we have it, the, we're looking at the i mean the season's starting okay it's mm-hmm. right it's tomorrow and these guys we've got these two names that aren't on the ontario roster they nobody's announced them signing anywhere What's what's going on? And yeah. I think I think you and I might have even chatted uh, about that time. Yeah, over Facebook. Over I think. Facebook. Yeah. I think we even chatted about that time and just sort of discussed it. And I, you gave me some heads up as to what was going on. And of course, I just keep my mouth shut. That's just the way it rolls. Yep. But um, yeah. Anyway, talk about that. Yeah. So uh, we had all the intentions of coming back, and Joey was in the international friendly games down in Texas, I believe it yep. was, um, where Bernie was hosting the team and coaching the team and. You know, the conversation happened two months before where, you know, he asked, oh, are you guys, you know, still coming back? And we were absolutely 100%. Um, and then come closer to the season, uh, it was just, you know, it was just a call where, hey, we have someone else coming in. Uh, huh. and, and when we're not going to have you, uh, we're not going to have you come back. And again, no hard feelings. We get it. It's a sport. It's, it's a business. It's a business. You know, and we're coming all the way across the country and you have to house us. And again, no hard feelings whatsoever. So you guys never moved to Ontario? No, we did. Oh, well, yeah. We, we, yeah. We, we, we lived there for the season. Yeah. We gotcha. lived there for the okay, season. Okay, very good. Um, but then we left because we cleaned chimneys. Yeah. Uh, we're Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, we're the Dick Van Dykes, Dick Van as Dykes. you like to say. Yeah. That's right. We're the Dick Van Dykes of, of the world. So As you are. Um, so at that point, we were just, we were waiting to see what would happen if anyone would call us. And no call came. Um, no call until Joey was on the couch eating Doritos. 
Well, uh, well, before that, before that, there was um, I was what, approached. What flavor Doritos? It was regular nacho cheese. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> red bag. Uh, <laughs> and a Bud Light. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, Corona. Oh, Corona. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. What's a Bud Light? No, no, no. What? No, no, no. Pacifico. 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 But no, it just about blew it there. We just about lost it. Yeah. So, um, no. So I actually had gotten calls from, and this is what people don't know about that time of me being or us not having contracts or having a team it was a season Ontario. i mean it was looking at the season until yeah. we see you show up in baltimore yeah but before i ended up in baltimore i had uh, been approached by kansas city i okay. had been approached by cedar rapids again and i had been approached by el paso um interesting and you know they all said hey we're looking at goalies are you interested in coming back when it came to cedar rapids uh el paso was really really adamant in trying to get me down there um, and I remember just sitting at, you know, my mom's office desk in the house and she, and I was like, I called her and I was looking at all the stats, looking at all, you know, the playoffs and the standings and something about it. Just, I just knew I didn't, I shouldn't go. Not that I shouldn't go, that it just wasn't the path that I should take at that moment. You know, just because I just, for some reason, my mom said, Hey, you know, don't, cause for me, it's tough to not turn people down from when they say, hey, we want you to play for us, it's because, right. you know, I have a lot of respect for everybody in the league. Right. Like, every team in the league I have a lot of respect for. You know, right. I, I, we, we respect the indoor game. Absolutely. Um, so when, you know, it was it, it was the only team that I've ever said, no, I can't go. Um, so it was I was I was literally at the desk, and I called my mom, and she's like, no, like, if you feel like you shouldn't go, then just, you know, say it to them that, you know, it's You're probably done. not the best That's move it. for you. That's right. So I said, you know, and she's like, trust me. If, if, she's like, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Just wait it out and something will happen. Wow. And I remember sitting there and I'm like, okay, wow. Well, yeah. And then there you go. All of a sudden, wow. all of a sudden I'm watching uh, watching the Baltimore Blast play, I believe it was Kansas, Harrisburg or Kansas City, um, where William went down and I'm huh. eating my Doritos. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and he's getting, and and he's, good beer. And he, yeah, and he's getting, he's getting waft, he's getting walked off the field and I got a call from Soccer Sam. And I'm like, oh, and when Soccer Sam calls me, obviously you pick up right away. So I picked up right away and he goes, hey, um, just letting you know, William just got hurt. Are you watching? I said, yes, I'm watching. Uh, you okay. know, is it going to be, the, is it bad? And he said, yeah, I think it's bad. Um, so I gave Ke uh, Kevin Healy your phone number. So 10 minutes later, Kevin Healy calls me. Really? And he's like, hey, are you interested in coming to play for Baltimore? And at that point, they're on, they've already won two in a row. That's right. Um, you know, their goalie is hurt. They need right. a goalie. Yep. I knew yep. I was needed. Yep. Um, yep. And, it, and the puzzle kind of just, fell into place the way that wow. you know people had encouraged me to follow you couldn't write a movie script no better yeah so it uh it happened all in you know in a matter of i think uh i ended up signing with uh baltimore and they said okay you know what do you what do you, you know what do you want and i said this is my number and they said yep here you go i'll send you the paperwork over um can you get here tomorrow <laughs> and i said <laughs> You want me to get there tomorrow? And she, he's like, he's like, yeah. So I talked to my, my 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 mom and my dad, and I go, how can we get there? Like, how can this happen? So my mom said, okay, these are the flights. You're gonna get a flight with me to Baltimore tomorrow morning before the game. Your dad is gonna drive your car down with everything packed in your car, so that he could drive, so that I could have a car in Baltimore. Wow. So he drove the five hours to, or five and a half, six hours to Baltimore with my car, with all my stuff in it, so that I could only have an hour flight, so that I could be ready to play in Baltimore for my first game. And at that moment, I'm sitting alone. So wait a minute. So your equipment manager, wait, your dad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> our, yeah. Is, he, he just, is driving your equipment in a car so that you don't have to worry about baggage or anything or like driving this. Or driving hours. nothing like that. You can fly there, get be on ready, site, and be play. ready, and be mindset, physically ready. Yep. And he's going to show up with all your gear. Yep. And that's that's the uh, that's the uh, the beautiful thing about the family that me and Jamie have. Um, yeah, it is. You know, our our mom is here, obviously, and. and yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna flirt. <laughs> no, she won't. No, no, she, yeah, um, we'll pull her in here just to get her um, face on here a little bit because um, we keep referencing her. Or we yeah, keep looking over that yeah, way at our audience. Yeah, yeah. She's um, gonna have to come in picture here in a minute. So, so you know, we've always had our older brother Maddie who pushed us initially <laughs> at the very beginning. We had our mom support us, you know, coaching us wise. Our dad, you know, supporting us. Our sisters supporting us. Everybody was supporting us from the very beginning. Nice. Um, so when, you know, when my mom was like, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. I said, okay, perfect. I got into the locker room and I'm sitting in a locker room before the game and I have the roster up. And I'm looking at the roster with all the pictures and I'm looking and I'm like, okay, that's Juan. No way. That's Marco. And I'm no like, way. I look at Nelly. The only people I know there are Nelly, Tony, Will, 
and and Pat Healy because those are the only people that like I've known or have played against. Or, and, Will, and Will's not on the field. Yeah, and had connections <laughs> with. So I was literally sitting in. I'm wow. like, I'm like Nelly, is that Adriano? Yeah. I'm, wow. And that way, that way for that game, I could know who I was talking to because right. you know communication as a goalkeeper was huge. It's huge. It's huge. Um, wow. So yeah, it was it was a shell shock. And okay, you know, so I got a little bit of a I got a little bit of an analogy to make, um, and see how you respond to this. Back in the early days, not early days, but my early days as a kid, uh, NFL, um, Johnny Unitas carrying the Baltimore, yeah, the Baltimore Colts, okay, through the season and having a great year and goes down with an injury. And Earl Morrill is his backup quarterback. And he steps in and he carries the Baltimore Colts to the NFL playoff game <clears throat> playoff series and Johnny Unitas comes out of his injury okay and Johnny Unitas steps in and goes into the NFL back into the team roster okay now in that case didn't turn out so good because Joe Namath came out and beat him in the Super Bowl and it was one of those deals it's like wait a minute Earl Morrill got you to the championship all right, you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, um, I think there's uh, also another NFL team. I think that happened to uh, New England Patriots. You ever heard of them? No. With, with Tom Brady? No, I never. Maybe. I don't know who <laughs> that, that guy is. Drew Bledsoe. I think, kind of. I think I think he got hurt, and Tom Brady <laughs> stepped in, and the greatest to ever throw a pigskin <laughs> ball was was born. Um, but yeah, so I, I and, man, I should have never brought it to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Do you know the analogy I'm making? Here? Yes, yeah. So I mean, initially. You know, a lot of people would say, you know, a lot of a lot of fans, you know, to this day still say, hey, Joey, um, you should have played those last two games against Milwaukee and uh, Monterey. But for me, it wasn't a it's never been about and for us, it's never been about us. Like, yes, we are the Wonder Twins. We are the package deal that we are. But it's not about Jamie and Joey. We want to win. It's, and the, if, it's and, the team. I get that. Yeah. And, and, and it's and, and the that, team. It, I get that. And had. And, and and with with the blast coming through with the championship, yep. it's kind of a mute analogy that I make. Yeah. Okay. And had that not been the case, maybe a different story. Yeah. And I think I think um, you know a lot of people question why the decision was made that I don't play. I didn't question it. Um, I'm I'm a player that I listen to the coach and whatever the coach says goes. Did um, you? It's think, a job in the end of the day. Okay, so you got the championship ring. You showed it off online. I loved it. Yeah, it's a beautiful ring. Yes. It's a, you earned it. It's a, it, you. it's an awesome uh, accomplishment um, for you personally and the team. Yeah. Um. So then we come into the current season. We're winding the story down a little bit here, guys. <laughs> yes. We come into the current season. And did you come into the current season expecting to do a tandem uh, uh, work with William in goal? So uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll yeah. actually uh, interrupt. Um, during the last season where they won the championship, I went for a week, just you know, regular practice week, um, just because Perfect. I wanted to, I wanted to just go and see how I would fare against this team, you know, or with the guys, um, and I. That was kind of my tryout without knowing it was my tryout. Interesting. So I, I did well and I enjoyed myself. And um, the next season when, you know, Joey got the call from Kevin Healy, um, right away, Joey called me and he goes, hey, you're going to get a call from Kevin Healy. And oh, I, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, uh, OK. Uh, so Kevin Healy called me and was like, hey, you know, this is, you know, this is the numbers. We like what we saw. We want we want you to come play for the Baltimore Blast. Nice. At that point, I was like. I was dumbfounded. You know, this team that just won the, th the third championship in a row um, with all these talented players, you know, the coaching staff that it has um, and me not playing for a whole season. That's right. You know, it, it was kind of it was kind of, you know, uplifting, but also like, wow, that just happened. Um, so we went in, uh, you know, with the mindset of helping the team out when, however we can, you know, whenever we can, however we can. That was our mindset. Um, and. So wait, wait a minute, Pat Healy is the one that called you. Kevin, 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 this is, Kevin, Kevin So this is before Kevin and Pat had left to go to Harrisburg. Clearly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Did that have anything to do with what happened? Because they were the ones, that, or he was the one that contacted you and then moved on to Harrisburg? We can't, Am I getting a little too political we, we, here? We, we can't be for certain. We, we don't know. Uh, we, we can all have our judgments and all have our, our you know opinions on what happened or you know why, okay. why things went the way they did. Okay. Um, but we... In the end of the day, we look at it as, as a, again, like a job. 
you know, of course. they have a business, we are the employees. Of course. Uh, and, you know, I'll say it, we're huge wrestling fans. We're, we've always been huge wrestling fans. Uh, and when it came down to the middle of the season for, for this season with Baltimore, uh, it, was, it was kind of like being a wrestler with WWE. Um, and us, you know, knowing that people that are wrestling for the greatest company in the world at what they do, they're fine with leaving their job. Um, mm. And that was that's how we looked at it. Mm. If people can leave what they love doing at mm. the greatest company, mm. why can't we? Yeah. Uh, and we just wanted to we wanted to just play. We wanted to just enjoy playing at the Which level we wanted to play. Which takes us to the current story. Yes. Because uh, that's what you weren't getting in Baltimore. Yes. And whatever by whatever means um, the agreement came up between the Baltimore franchise and Ed Hale and and uh, Soccer Sam and whatever plays out in that. Uh, it puts you on the field for the Rochester Lancers, uh, not at the beginning of the season, yep. but um, to finish out the season. Um, so, and now you're playing, okay? And I talked to your mom uh, briefly, um, I think it was on Friday. And one of the things that she said to me that impressed me was that she's, they're happy, Greg, they're happy. They're playing and they're happy. And that's the most important thing. Of course, a mom's gonna say that if yeah. if, if if you're happy. Yeah, yeah. If you're happy, they're gonna. She's gonna say that they're happy. And as far as the most important thing is concerned, that might be a little personal. Uh, she, that might be what's important to her. Yeah. <laughs> you know that the kids are happy. But yeah. So what's up? Yeah. So I mean, it was a it was a situation that we initially didn't think it was gonna be played out the way it did. Um, I think some. I think you know. I'm not gonna get too political, but I think some front office. Uh, Changes were made that, you know, made some decisions uh, altered a little bit than what initially we thought going in there were, was going to happen. Um, but, you know, when the opportunity came to, you know, approach the coaching staff and, you know, the front office and say, hey, you know, we're not happy with where we are. We're not happy with the role we have. Um, you know, there's this opportunity for us to possibly you know if, if this opportunity arises for us to go play in rochester would you guys be okay with it and Let initially it happen. yeah and initially it was uh it was a no initially it, it was uh no you guys are with baltimore you know we want you here um you know it's it's going to be okay and, and and we learned okay we'll stick it out for a little bit longer so i think we stuck it out for another two weeks three weeks um we made all these trips and it kind of just you know, I played one game out of 11. He played one, he got one game out of 11. Um, but I was still going on all these trips and it was, it, it was, uh, it was a time when you we, told me, what did you tell me? You were the most expensive gosh, doorman, doorman, the doorman, the yeah. most expensive doorman. But it, again, it's, it's no hard feelings <laughs> to them. It was more so, you know, we just wanted to be happy again with playing soccer. Um, yeah. at, I think at that moment, we both didn't enjoy playing soccer just because of the things that were mm. going on. And we just wanted to be able to go and enjoy it, whether I'm getting paid or not. It's a sport that I, we've, since four years old, we've been playing. Um, so if we can contribute in any way possible to um, help out the Rochester Lancers and if Baltimore Blast was open to giving us that opportunity to go help them out, yeah, we decided that it would be the best thing for us. Um, and, you know, obviously we're still under contract. I was just going to ask that yep, question. Yep, we're still under contract. Okay, as we're talking, yep. the Baltimore Blast are, are playing a pretty heated game against Utica City FC. Yeah. yeah. Right now. Yeah. Last last I saw, they were up 3-2 to two in the third quarter. Okay. Um, we watched it actually on the way here. Okay. Um, but, what yeah. happens? Just we don't want it to happen. But I mean, what happens? Are you are you still? Uh, could is it possible that we might see you guys um, playing it's, it's, on the field? Not, in the not, my, not myself. Yeah, not I myself. don't. I don't think. I don't think Jamie. Um, I don't think Jamie would. Uh, would be needed in Baltimore. Okay, um, that's it, unfortunate it, for, for the rest yeah, of the season. Yeah, for the rest know, of the season, their, they gave their like playoff twenty-five man roster or whatever. And I see. I wasn't on the cut, which again, like Joey said, no hard feelings. We we get yeah. that they're winning a championship. They yeah. want to win a championship. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, we're gonna root for them all the way until the end. Uh, I Good. mean, we. We still, I'm you know, have good friends on the okay. team. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we still have good friends on the team, and we, we respect Danny Kelly and David Bascom and all, all that they have done and taught us. Um, but, you know, the roster goes down to the limit. And, again, I'll be ruined for them all the way until they win that championship or until someone dethrones them. Yeah, um, and that's a three-year yeah. That's yeah. a three-year dethroning. Whoever I mean, that's a huge Whoever dethroning. can do it deserves it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but, but we do know there is a there is a loophole in uh, and somewhere in the rule book where if William gets hurt, um, Joey can be brought in. 
because uh, he's still under contract, and okay. that's up to that's up to, ultimately to the coaching staff and if it's needed. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so we just gotcha. we just wait. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, we started off the conversation talking about this weekend. Uh, you guys got the third place trophy. It was yep. a pretty impressive trophy. I saw yeah. Sam taking a drink out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> Lancer Lager. Yeah, it was probably his Lancer Lager in there yeah. um, that he that he just uh, created. Um, yeah, he, he also just, the yeah, he also he also he, he he made a nice he makes a nice wine too, I heard. I uh, saw the Sam. bottle. Yeah, I yeah, hadn't yeah. he's not pumping it as much as he's not promoting it quite yeah, as, yeah, much as much as he the is the lager. Yeah. 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 I I'm I'm guessing that he says he's not a beer drinker, but I'm pretty sure that that he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so no, it it all it all came into fruit into you know uh, a full circle with um you know before indoor there was just you know in, us enjoying the game yeah it was it wasn't about you know if you if you, i i actually asked my mom um because we never knew the story there was some you know political stuff in our in our youth when it came to you know our mom being a coach you know mm -hmm. she was the most winningest coach in maple um <laughs> as a, the she, only, she was the, the only she was the only the she was, yeah the she was the only female coach in the state of massachusetts to co coach a division one boys team um and she was we were beating everybody and um, the winningest one at that. Yeah, and the winningest one. Um, so not the winningest woman. Yeah, which made no difference because she was the only one. No, yeah, but, but at that the, time, but the woman winningest coach. But that was also as the only one. Yeah, that was also what like fifteen years ago. All right, when sixteen years ago, when weird on its face. It's a different. It was <laughs> yeah. a different time. It's a different time. Um, so there was a lot of politics there, and we just enjoyed soccer. So I think um, getting into the the pro indoor game, um, it's been a blessing because um, obviously we never expected any of this and yeah, I, I think we, it's awesome man yeah we came we came in i, I actually asked our mom um earlier uh, this weekend i said hey uh, if you were to pick five of your players that you've ever coached what five would you think would be professional oh and just because i wanted to pick a brain because i never actually we never if you you know the relationship we have with our mom um, it's not a regular son mother relationship yeah, it's, a, it's pretty it, much a coach yeah player yeah, relationship kind of is um so when we when we get when we uh when i asked her that and, she, and we weren't in her top five <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a, it was yeah. like hey mom what do you mean you're not top five like yeah. come on here we are um but i don't think anybody the only the question really was us and what other three yeah yeah pretty much it was, it was a trick question but she didn't get it um <laughs> actually fun fun fact one of the, one of the ones that she claims and i would agree is a, a kid named Alex Dos Santos who actually lives in San Diego now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice, and he nice, used to, nice. he used to work at the duck dive and everything. And we're trying to get you know you know get time with him after this uh, you know to see him. But he's a good friend of ours. And again, I don't know if we'd be in the top ten. I think yeah. she's a little biased against us, um, <laughs> and she doesn't want us to be so egotistical like we are. That's what it is. Um, she's keeping us grounded. Okay. You know, um, but like Joey said, there was a lot of politics, even at the youth age that we just didn't understand. Right. Um, but we, we didn't really care to be a part of it. We right. wanted to just enjoy the game. Yeah. In the, in the end, if we're not happy with something, we're not going to do it. No one should do it. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's and, right. And, and, and it's been, that's why I do this is cause I hate it so much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. <laughs> um, so I think it, it was, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, and, and so, so Kelly's going to, Kelly's going to come on over here. She's going to do a photo bomb on this. Um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna close this up, guys. I just want to say one thing really quick before Kelly jumps jumps in. Oh, on I'm not no, 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 I'm supposed no. to be with that. Yeah, you're supposed to be with that. <laughs> Nothing on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll edit that out. On on our drive down here to, this morning, um, I actually said to my wife, I said, you know, I feel kind of bad. These guys fly in from Rochester. Uh, they got a limited period of time here, and uh, here I am, right in the middle of a beautiful day in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm pulling them away from whatever it is that they want to do. And she looked over at me and she said, Greg, if they didn't want to be doing this, they would have said no. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so I really appreciate your time, all of you guys. And Kelly Capinos, I mean, you're the, you're the reason I know you guys <laughs> as well as I do. And I appreciate and love yeah. you so much. Well, you too. And both Jamie of you, Jamie, it, it's been a pleasure to know Joey's you. And Joey, Greg. it's been a pleasure to know you. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, if you like what you just watched, follow me on social media. Go to studyonsoccer.com, click on the Patreon link, and uh, support me there. Thank you very much. When we, where we grew up, again, very Portuguese dominant, uh, Gremio Lusitano uh, was, you know, back in like, I think the 40s, they had a team. Uh, and they built a concrete walled stadium in our town. Uh, and we like to call it Little Portugal because all the houses are close together. Um, very Portuguese oriented on that side of town. Um, and the members of the club are, you know, $50 for a membership to this Portuguese club. 
Um, and, you know, we had Gremio Lusitano was a big team there. The Western Mass Pioneers who played in the USL Division Three, they won the championship in 99. Uh, we would go there and we would just watch these games as little kids walk in the field just watching the games. This is a this is a this is even better because one of the goalies that I grew up watching at the West Mass Pioneers is Brian O'Quinn. Oh, interesting. Brian O'Quinn. Wow. Well, he was he was a goalie there for I think two or three years. Wow. Um, and younger. I mean, obviously, he's not, he's not old, but you know, when he was there, he was a goalie that I was like, oh, you know. And then all of a sudden, I, I see him at Syracuse initially when I start playing for Rochester, and I'm like. Wait, this is the same guy that I grew up watching right. outdoor in my hometown. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. And, and and the bar, the club is literally right across the street. So after the game, everybody <laughs> goes to the bar and parties, and it's and, a, and it's this a is, celebration. This is, this, is a field, this is a field that field fence. Oh, yeah. It's fans. Oh. So if, you, if you've seen the Chicago altercation after we won in Chicago with uh, the beer beer yeah. being thrown, yeah. we've been used to that since we were probably six years Got old. Got it. Well, I've, um, I've seen, we've, seen, we've seen a mother, uh, somebody was heckling her son during the game, and she wasn't happy with it, so she actually stuck her umbrella through the fence oh, as, as he was running by, and he tri she tripped him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and, it's a, it's a, it was a hostile environment. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, it, it's, it's where we grew up. It's what we know. Um, and... Another fun fact about that place is we have the actual Uzebu statue that was at Gillette was actually shipped to the stadium, and that's actually on display okay, in the Luz Luz Luzitano that? Stadium. So Uzebu was a... He's probably um, the most prolific Portuguese national team player, other than Christian. Before Christian... Right, right he was yeah, Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. It, was like, it was like Pele Uzebu, yeah. basically, for the Portuguese okay. Yeah, uh, The Brazilian Portuguese Pele, the Portuguese Uzebu. Okay, so, so how much does he look like you guys? Nothing. Nothing. He's dark skinned. Nothing. He's very dark skinned. Um, yeah, we are Portuguese. We are Portuguese. No, this, believe no, no, it no, no. I was just gonna say. I, I just want to. I, I this is stupid. I know this is stupid, but I'm sitting here looking at you guys, and I'm thinking, you guys look just like those statues of the Portuguese explorers from the 1800s. Yeah. I mean, both of you guys. Yeah. I, obviously, yeah. like, you, look, you look just like those Portuguese yeah. explorers with the beard and stuff, and you look exactly like those guys. Yeah. So, so we 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 actually did. You know, have Portuguese fifteen hundred Portuguese yeah. class in high school. Yeah. That's how much of a culture it is in our town and and the stadium that we grew up. We still play to to this day in the men's league. Uh, we we kind of run one of the teams there, and we we enjoy having you know people learn from us now because we also coach at the high school. I'm the freshman yeah, coach at the high school. Nice. Joey's the JV boys coach, um, and they just won the state championship this past um, year. This past nice. year, and we. We drove all the way from Baltimore back up just to go to the to the soccer banquet because that's how much it means to us to be a part of the culture that helped build us to who we are. Absolutely. You know, it, we don't come from, you know, to give it back, man. Yeah, we had to give it back, and you know, they built us just as much as you know, kind of our parents did because we grew up in a culture that took everything so serious about soccer, um, and that's that's who we are. Uh, but we like having fun with it, as you know. We yep, yep. we like joking around. We like having fun, but. In the end, it's about happiness, and when we play, we try to win. So that's that's why we are here this weekend. We tried winning, and Jamie Capinos, Joey Capinos. My name is Greg Suddy. This is Suddy on Soccer. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Um, and you guys go enjoy the rest of San Diego, man. Just swap me. Swap me. Swap me. You only got forty. You only got forty minutes. That's all. Oh, that's we'll fine. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>